Priming is actually a very simple concept, and I think it's a must-must, even for some experienced carnivores. But it's a very simple mm -hmm. concept. So the full priming, there, it, it, it works about a three-week space. So I'm going to describe to you. The first thing is you eat three meals a day, okay? Yeah. Three meals a day is not just that simple. Three meals a day until you're stuffed. Yeah. The trick is, is most people drink coffee, and we're talking about carnivore foods only. Yeah. For those who decide to drink coffee, the first thing you do is eat. Coffee has to be as dessert. Not yeah. only that, you cannot have coffee for like all throughout the day. You would just keep coffee for up to an hour after you eat. Mm -hmm. as you have it for dessert. And every time you want more coffee, you need to eat first. In that first week, you're allowed snacks and also uh, three meals a day until comfortably stuck. What does comfortably <laughs> stuck means? It means you eat until you're like, all right, I'm full. Okay, that's when you really mm -hmm. start. And you mm -hmm. keep eating, you keep eating until you're like, your fork gets heavy, you start sweating and you're like dropping that fork and like, I can't mm -hmm. eat. And that's what stuff is. And you're doing this three times a day. Normally, coffee mimics energy. It doesn't give energy, it mimics it, okay? Um, but what happened is suddenly I had like panic attacks. Before it gave me energy and it put a smile on my face. But now um, it just gave me severe panic attacks. And I'm like, I was uh, leaving the house, walking the dog, and I'm like, what's gonna happen if suddenly my my house is gonna burn? <laughs> like, thought like this. I'm like, where is it coming from? Luckily, I knew it's caffeine, and I knew it's it's all the bad things, all the anti nutrients, anti nutrients in coffee as well. And I was like, this is crazy. A small, like a f f one fourth of a normal dose of coffee. Okay, it was very, very light, almost didn't taste of nothing. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Why am I even thinking about it? And I was just, after I realized that it's, that it's caffeine and it's coffee, I was just laughing to myself and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why am I thinking it's suddenly my house gonna burn and all my stuff's gonna burn, how I'm gonna do my podcast, how I'm gonna do this. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why am I even, why is it even crossing my mind instead of just going out and having, having a walk? Welcome everyone, another episode of um, Project Success Podcast. Today's guest is, I think, the most famous carnivore coach of all. Okay, one of the first one. I think he's one of the pioneers of carnivore diet and carnivore coaching. That's what I think. Um, he's definitely pioneers, uh, a pioneer of um, priming, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute. And um, yeah, I think you're the owner of the most successful and the best carnivore transformation ever happened. <laughs> Everyone has you uh, on their thumbnails, on their um, uh, well, anything to do with carnivore, to be fair. Everyone says this is what happens when you go, you know, when you go carnivore. And your transformation is still the most famous one. Everyone talks about it. Everyone shows it. That's what happened. Go carnivore. Um, so, um, yeah, I think we're going to talk about this transformation a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking uh, your time and, um, yeah, sharing the, the carnivore knowledge with us. Um, yeah. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and what you're doing at the moment? Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for such a w wonderful uh, introduction. <laughs> uh, uh, My pleasure. Hey, Don. Yep. I'm 51 years old. Uh, at uh, 45 is when I started my carnivore journey uh, almost six years ago. Uh, September, 16th, uh, September 15th will be my six-year carnivore. And I went through quite a journey. I was literally uh, dying. So I Wow. I still have it, have the colitis, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it worked to the point where my colon would need it to be removed. What? Uh, I didn't know that. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah so it was it's as it was, severe as it gets, isn't it? Uh, right. I was bleeding out my, you know, butt yeah. and uh, I had the hemorrhoids to prove it and the scar yeah. tissue to prove it. And of course the pain. So, um, yeah, I was literally how I felt, I literally felt what death felt like. So just that, just that, just that life, life force coming away yeah. from you, know, yeah. right? Like, it's like, you're seeing it, you're feeling it, you're like, it's scary. And at the same time, you're like, how does this work? 
you know, but, um, I found it through really accident because I found out I was also pre-diabetic. Um, okay. I was A1C of uh, 6.0, waist size over 39, which was one of the criteria. I was 44 at the time. Yeah. Um, I had uh, uh, size weight size wise was 44 pants. Um, I ended up uh, uh, finding out that I had the, you know, because they measured the HDL, very low HDL. Mm -hmm. So that was a problem also, high triglycerides, yeah. um, you name it, I was a classic case to be diabetic. So much so that my nurse is like, look, there's nothing you can do about that. It's a progressive disease. Mm -hmm. It's going to get worse. Best thing that you can do to maybe manage it was diet and exercise. And I'm like, well, you know, I've tried exercise before, but you know what? I can try it again. I haven't tried it since, uh, you know, I was a, in my in, in my younger years, in my 20s and stuff. So I, yeah. you know, I started yeah. exercising, did that really hard for like seven months. And uh, I had no real results other than the pound gain. And yes, I could actually went from uh, walking to jogging. So yeah. Maybe you could say that's an improvement. And uh, I could yeah. lift yeah. a little bit heavier weights. Yes. Okay. So that's a little bit better improvement. But I'm like, I weighed more. I didn't look any healthier, nothing. So I'm like, okay, well, that. To me, it didn't work. You know, yeah. take a rocket scientist to make me figure that out. So I'm like, all right, I'll try diet. Let's see what diet can do. So I looked up on, on the web at that time. It was not as censored. So I, I actually said how to cure diabetes. Mm -hmm. And the first thing came up was Diet Doctor website. And wow. I looked up Diet Doctor website. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, these were low carb doctors that were talking about high fat and low carbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that same time, coincidentally, there was a challenge in Orange Theory that said that that had it where it's like a six week transformation challenge. You get to win a prize, whatever. And I was like, you know what? I can do it for six weeks. You know, it's all scarier just dedicating yourself to a diet for the rest of your life. Meanwhile, right. you're like six weeks. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. So I, I did that. Uh, I researched as much as I could. Of course, it was complicated because, you know, they were like, no fruit. Pretty much, I put in my mind meat and greens. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, they were like, no fruits, but you could have a little bit of sweetener here, you know, this kind of sweetener. And I was like, okay, all that. meat and greens, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and avoiding sugar as much as I could. That's what I did. Yeah. Uh, first two weeks, lost 10 pounds. Looked like I lost 30. And I, was, yeah. I looked in the mirror, I was like, and people were noticing. I'm like, wow, this is uh, amazing. Okay, there's got to be something there. This is in two weeks now that the whole seven months didn't even scratch. Yeah. And uh, of course, I felt my exercise starting to be better, all of that. Now, fast forward a little bit. I kind of fell off after the six week because I saw the results and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, it got the data point, went on vacation to Canada and of course, all that went loose and started enjoying my carbs. Interestingly yeah. enough, I saw the reverse also happen too. Yeah. I gained that back weight very quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, so there's obviously something to do with diet, mm -hmm. not necessarily exercise. Yeah. So by uh, January came around, there was another challenge. Of course, you know, in January, there's always challenges, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm in for the next one. So I was like, but this time I'm like, can I really avoid the greens? Because I hated cooking the greens. It took like two hours <laughs> every day. Two hours, but I'm like chopping everything up. Oh no, God. Throwing away because it's like mostly stock and everything like that. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, why am I wasting how much time doing yeah. that? And I don't even like eating the grains. Mm -hmm. You know, putting like a lot of butter on it, <laughs> you know, the high fat stuff just to make it taste. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone does. I know. Realize, when you think right? about it, people eat it because they think it's healthy. Right. You know, I have, I haven't touched greens for six years now and I don't miss it a bit. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know why people put greens on a pizza or something like this. I'm like, it's disgusting. <laughs> that, that's too. So yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I do this with meat alone and I started talking to my nurse about it, talking to my friends about it, seeing if anybody, yeah. is anybody that's done that. And they're like, oh, you kill yourself, you're going to have heart attacks, you're going to have you won't be able to poop. No uh, nutrients. Yeah. Yeah. No nutrients. Yeah. That's, yeah. What they, that, that's what they said. And they're yeah. scared the crap out of me. And I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It's, so yeah. I started looking up online. Is there anybody that did without me? So I start coming up with like uh, the Anderson family, the, you know, uh, Kelly Hogan, uh, yeah. Zero Run on Life, you know, the, 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 all those websites. And I'm like, wow, yeah. people 
13 years, 20 years without me. And boy, they, they had some before pictures and after pictures. Yeah. And like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> At this time when you were researching, was Sean Bakel already on Joe Rogan podcast? Not yet. Not yet. So Michaela Peterson, she, she was on a podcast in there. No, no, that was after. So I was kind of predating. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what happened is, I, so I went carnivore. Uh, because I saw their results. I was like, I'm more trying yeah. to six days. If it kills me, fine. You know, I mean, they went, <laughs> that, 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 okay, whatever, that, that's on. You know, so I did that and I was like, that was in a way easy. So, you know, cause you know, I was like eating bacon all the time. I was stuffing myself yeah. the whole time. Yeah. I was like, so the cravings weren't really there. It, if I yeah. thought of a craving, I went straight to eat mm -hmm. something. I made myself where I was not hungry, which I didn't yeah. know at the time what priming was. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't bet, but I started yeah. putting two and two together, you know? Yeah. That's in how I got my mind. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Of course, I still made the mistake of undereating, which caused me to have the really bad keto flu. Yeah. So yeah. I had it for like a whole month. I'm glad I felt it because, you know, again, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So uh, that gave the real scare to my nurse. I had very high blood pressure at the time. Yeah. I had the worst. Uh, um, um, total cholesterol, it went straight to the roof uh, <laughs> because my LDL just shot straight up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So they were like, you got to stop now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I, I don't I don't feel bad. I actually feel okay yeah. other than my yeah. flu section. Yeah. And actually, I, I felt better than I felt before. So. Keto flu can be very scary, isn't it? Because I remember yeah. when I went from high carb and I did the same mistake, I didn't eat enough. That, that, that's the main mistake everyone does. Everyone does because everyone thinks to lose body fat, you have to eat less. But with carnivore diet, with priming, it's totally different. So it's the same mistake. And many times I thought I'm having a heart attack. Yes. Oh, I have. That was so, so, so severe. And I'm like, yeah. something going well with my chest and like start panicking. And I'm like, I have to eat some carbs. And then I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is not for me. Maybe, maybe, you know. Keto is not for me. Maybe carnivore is not for me. So scary. Now it's a lot more information about it. Thank you, you know. Thank you um, to you. Uh, 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 but yeah, it had to be scary for you, Ned. It was. It was absolutely scary. And yeah. it got me out of it, you know. <laughs> and I was the same, yeah. Yeah. During that time, also, my, my nurse was like, since you're doing this crazy stuff, you should get a calcium coronary calcium score. And yeah. I did. Yeah. And it turned out to be 700. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, he's telling me, look at the damage you've already done. And I'm like, I don't think it works that way. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, you know, meanwhile, coronary calcium, it's like a long time. I'm like, it's probably my yeah. best time. I even yeah. Think. But he was trying to put the scare on me so I could follow his vegetarian or Mediterranean diet he wanted me to Yeah. Um, then, so, you know, then I, I, I started practicing fasting instead. And then I ran it. That's when Joe Rogan and Dr. Baker came on. Yeah, and then and then I followed his program uh, when he announced the the N equals mini uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So I went through that in September fifteenth of twenty seventeen, and three months later, you know, submitted all the results that he was asking for during that time. And after three months, I was like, all right, you know, I could do this, but I need to add some something like onion, mm -hmm. garlic. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. add, and I had the worst spirit in my life. And uh, the worst acid reflux. And I was yeah. like, you know, it just made me think this criteria. It's like, is five minutes of pleasure really worth three days of hell? Yeah. And that's how I started putting everything in there. How mm -hmm. much pain, how much pain is worth the pleasure and how much time is it worth for me to give up, to take that pleasure versus the one day of yeah. 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 all. Yeah. So that's pretty much my story in a nutshell. Wow. Um, you know, uh, six years later, I, obviously I went through a lot of path, um, you know, was coaching people and yeah. actually re refining the diet through others. Yes. Yeah. And that's where I developed my priming and even developed a great fasting schedule where people can mm -hmm. learn all about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you something funny as well, because like I mentioned before we start recording, I was eating just meat and salt and water for like two weeks. And then uh, I didn't run out of meat, to be fair. Um, but in the shop, there was a bag on sale. Okay. And I looked at the ingredients and I'm like, okay, there's like 0.1% spices. 
um, which I didn't eat for two weeks, nothing. Okay. And then I'm eating this burger, which is basically pure meat. And then I, I, I start tasting some uh, pepper, some myron, and I'm like, I don't think this should be in my mouth. I was like, there's something dodgy about it. And while I was eating that, I was like, I don't think I should eat that. I should, I don't think I should eat that plant, which is in there. And it, it was like microscopic. It, it was just, it was just flavored with spices. That's it. Okay. And I had very, very severe stomach after and, and, and proper diarrhea. And I don't think it's coincidence because it was pure meat with a little bit of spices and, and my stomach didn't take it well. Um, and I think what happens is that when you go with plants for a long time, the damage they do, they are a lot more severe than before when you were eating plants. Um, and you can feel it. And I'm sure you had the same thing you know, after you put in garlic and, and onion in, uh, in your scramble egg or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I noticed. My, 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 yeah. my, so pretty much I like to, uh, uh point it to like noise. So if you, yeah. if you go to a concert and everything's really loud, right? Yeah. Uh, you can hear things still people talking to you that that loudness is so used to it. Now imagine all of a sudden somebody cuts out all the noise and this yeah. person is just screaming at you. Yeah. It sounds like a scream. Ah. Yeah, it's a very good comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in anymore. You don't have yeah. a loud environment anymore. Uh huh. So now yeah. we're able to hear certain foods going into us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, and then the same the same happened with coffee because um, um, like I said, almost a month with with no plans, and um, I don't know what happened. I I had a coffee. And, 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 and normally coffee mimics energy. It doesn't give energy. It mimics it. Okay. Um, but what happened is suddenly I had like panic attacks before it gave me energy and it put a smile on my face, but now, um, it just gave me severe panic attacks. And I'm like, I was uh, leaving the house, walking the dog. And I'm like, what's going to happen if suddenly my my house is going to burn <laughs> like thought like this. I'm like, where is it coming from? Luckily I knew it's caffeine and I knew it's, it's all the bad things, all the antinutrients and in coffee as well. And I was like, this is crazy. A small, like a f f one fourth of a normal dose of coffee. Okay. It was very, very light, almost didn't taste of nothing. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Why am I even thinking about it? And I was just, after I realized that it's, that it's caffeine and it's coffee, I was just laughing to myself and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why am I thinking that suddenly my house is going to burn and all my stuff's going to burn, how I'm going to do my podcast, how I'm going to do this. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why am I even, why is it even crossing my mind instead of just going out and having, having a walk? Such a severe reaction to, you know, to, to, to the, the plant it's it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous. no pleasure in it whatsoever no like this for a few hours and i'm like i have to eat something so i had to eat another steak just to balance it out <laughs> yeah. i'm glad you said that because it it showed me something else too this is important so yeah as you felt the, with the caffeine mm -hmm. you felt every little thing about it increased yeah. your anxiety whatever now here's what i've noticed too on the positive side because plants make pretty decent medicine yeah so yeah you're sensitive to something because uh coffee obviously has a lot of negative chemicals yeah that, that's it is separated just to have the good parts in it mm -hmm. it's like some supplements yeah that yeah. supplement yeah. in the carnivore body is actually much more effective yeah than in the yeah. plant-based body yeah yeah that's what i know myself yeah i've done the same thing yeah so that I'm mean I don't, I'm not against any supplements lately after the fourth year of carnivore, I started taking supplements again and I noticed how effective it's been. Wow. What are you taking? Or for, um, taking certain things for, uh, mostly lately what I wanted to do at 50, I know it's kind of weird. So it's more about sexual. 
So yeah. very big all of a sudden it's like, Hey, what if I can get my sexual vitality? Like I was in my, in my, uh, late twenties. Yeah. Twenties. Yeah. 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 I started feeling it just on carnivore getting ramped up. And I was like, yeah. what if I could increase it that much more? Yeah. So I was taking those kind of supplements more like, uh, you know, horny goat weed. Uh, there's, uh, the tonkali. Tonkali, if our list yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all this kind of stuff. I'm uh, actually taking some, some shilajit. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just stuff for the sexual energy. And the way I see it, and I could be totally wrong. The way I see it, a reproductive male mm -hmm. will, I think, as long as I can prove that I can reproduce, my health will be better for that. Yeah. Because a not reproduce, not reproducible male mm -hmm. is considered not needed and discarded, so the body yeah. feel will break down and doesn't need him anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. So I'm like, what if I could at this point? Because right now I've got nothing to lose. I'm feeling great. Everything's yeah. Great. So it's like I'm let's enhance it a little bit more. I may be getting too greedy, and it might go negative, but so far it's. <laughs> Great. So the supplements, uh, what I realized as well is uh, coffee, didn't enjoy it. But when I put a little bit dose of yerba mate, which has L-theanine, which relaxes your body a little bit, and um, it gives you not a high kick uh, like uh, like caffeine, and it doesn't raise your um, stress hormones as much, I've noticed. It gives you a bit of more balance let's say energy i know it's not energy um but uh, let's say it gives you more more focus and i've noticed that that i need a lot a lot a lot less than when i eat carbs a lot less wow. and a lot less yeah and i remember like a few days ago when i had just a tiny dose of um uh of um yerba mate I had like six hours of non-stop focus, like recording videos and stuff. It's just crazy how it works. But now I have to be careful. Don't get used to it again. So I will definitely have to have those um, dates up from uh, from your mama. But going back to supplements as well, I take some sometimes. Well, I order another batch again. Some uh, adaptogenic herbs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can feel them straight away. Straight away, after one dose, you can feel what you're taking. And I believe in nature. I don't believe that we can heal ourselves with vegetables and fruits right. or grains or any superfoods. But I believe in nature gave us herbs to, you know, to heal ourselves before doctors and stuff like this. Um, and, and I think that's how we build. But before, before carnivore, I didn't believe it that much because I didn't feel plants. All right, I, I felt coffee, but that's about it. Before I was taking tons of supplements, because, you know, that's what you do. You just want to get better. Like you want to do get your sex drive better now, like you were in 20s or even better, because now you're carnivore before you were, you, you were plant eater, you know? So now your body should work better, I believe so, than it was in your 20s. And I think it's, it's totally achievable. You know, we are 50, a lot of people are getting ready you know, uh, to saying goodbye to this world. Yeah, you know, yeah. 75, when someone reaches 75, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I still live that long. Right. But us, I think I, I'm 41 now. I think I already started it. I'm in the beginning of my life. And I think when you're 51, you feel the same. We don't even halfway through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, And I believe we can feel better. Um, and you know, I take care of my um, my uh, my body as well. I'm trying to. It's very very hard. Like I said, lion diet is it's hard. It's mentally hard. Um, but um, yeah, it's 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 achievable. I don't think we even in our prime. Um, because I still think we are still healing after the damage we did when we were eating plants. That's what I see. Um, and when you reach 10 years, maybe, how long you, you, you're you carnivore now? Six, six, years. six years. Mm -hmm. I think when you reach 10, and I think the same, 
you're going to feel a lot better than you feel now. Because look at um, Sean Baker. He looks like on like on like on hormone therapy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I cannot believe all of this yeah. muscle is that man. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think that was possible. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like a beast. Back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. People usually have to do that and roid up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And w- I still work as a personal trainer, and I don't see almost no one without going on gear and building some muscle. No one. It's not achievable. Right. It's not achievable without gear these days because a lot of people, they don't need beef. They don't know about testosterone. They don't know about cholesterol. They don't know about hormones and stuff like this. Everything you teach, no one knows. People think I'm crazy when I said, you know, I just, I just basically eat meat as, you know, whenever I can, I eat meat. Sometimes, you know, I go off the wild a little bit, but mainly I'm trying because I know it's, it's the healthiest, the healthiest thing for me. Yeah. Um, coach, let's get to priming because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> priming. What is it? Tell everyone, tell everyone what's priming. You know, I'm sharing your knowledge to everyone as, uh, as much as I can. Tell us what priming is. Priming is actually a very simple concept. And I think it's a must, must, even for some experienced carnivores, but it's a very simple mm-hmm. concept. So the full priming there, it, it, it works about a three weeks phase. So I'm going to describe to you. The first thing is you eat three meals a day. Okay. Yeah. Three meals a day is not just that simple. Three meals a day until you're stuffed. Yeah. The trick is, is most people drink coffee and we're talking about carnivore foods only. Yeah. For those who decide to drink coffee, the first thing you do is eat. Coffee has to be as dessert. Not only that, you cannot have coffee for like all throughout the day. You would just keep coffee for up to an hour after you eat. And it has to have it for dessert. And every time you want more coffee, you need to eat first. And that first week, you're allowed snacks and also uh, three meals a day until comfortably stuffed. What does comfortably <laughs> stuffed means? It means you eat. Until you're like, all right, I'm full. Okay, that's when you really start. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. keep eating, you keep eating until you're like, your fork gets heavy, you start sweating, and you're like dropping that fork and like, I can't mm-hmm. eat. <laughs> that's what stuff is. And you're doing this three times a day. Wow. After a while, after the first three days, you might start loving it and it might open up appetite, which is nice. Yeah. That's when you keep going. And then you start noticing, oh my God, I can't, my, my third plates is looking smaller. And by the mm-hmm. second week, you start noticing like, uh, I don't really have the time to do my third meal. And it's not really because of the time. Cause you know, when you're hungry, you make the time, right? Yeah, exactly. It's because you're just not hungry. And that's mm-hmm. the idea. The trick between the two, the priming is to never be hungry throughout it. It is mm-hmm. a 30 week process. And the, the second week is three mads and the sec, the third week is two mads all the way through. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to easily each fast. Priming really sets you up for actually being able to fast. But it also sets you up for getting your gas tank all the way full. So you can mm-hmm. take that longer ride, longer stress hit, whether it's in workout or whether it's in fasting. Wow. So Why? Why, why do priming when, what does it do to your body? Why stuff yourself with so much meat Yeah. and what's going on with your body when you do it? Great example. So first of all, we, well, at least definitely in my personal opinion, yeah. meat is the best uh, and, and most natural foods that human beings can eat fat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that we know. Okay. Now why stuff? Okay. So here's the thing. Most of us don't even know our limits. When we're actually eating, mm-hmm. when we eat normal people, we're so brainwashed to eat 80%, you know, yeah. feeling just comfortable. Yeah. Safe. Yeah. That means all you're doing is filling your gas tank, maybe to half full all the time. Yeah. What happens when you can fill your gas tank all the way to full? How much longer can you go then? Mm-hmm. So here's the problem though. It, it doesn't take one time of stuffing to fill up your gas tank all the way to full. It takes weeks to do it. And your body is going to be the one that tells you, stop beating me so much. Mm -hmm. I can't take it anymore. That's where you're overspilling at that point. And that's where you're like, okay, well, then now I can start reducing because I don't need as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the biggest why. 
the other thing is since meat, the other way I know that meat is are essential, essential in the foods for us is because yeah. um, the amino acids. I mean, really, there's nine essential amino acids. And guess what? You can get that in meats. You can get them in plants, but you got to get different types of plants for this yeah. and that. And it's it's not even in a balanced ratio. Which yeah. It's in a properly balanced ratio. And also, it has in every meat, you'll have your nine essential uh, uh, amino acids. So mm-hmm. what you're trying to do is, believe it or not, I think your hormones actually try to sense the amino acids coming in. And that's where it cuts off your satiation or cravings for actual food in itself. So you want to get rid of cravings? Deal with those amino acids. The way to yeah. eat things that has the properly balanced amino acids until stuff. And a lot of people are like, I never thought I would never have sugar cravings. After I did priming, that happened. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, and a lot of people would never take that risk because what happens when you would tell somebody to eat a lot of food? What do they think right away? Right. Yeah. They think They're crazy. Like, ah. Yeah, that you're crazy. This, yeah, you know, this is gonna kill me. I'm just gonna get fatter than before. One time mm-hmm. he was getting lean and looking all muscular, but you're telling me just to do the opposite. It's for a lot of going and try that. My yeah. hardest part is to convince them is don't worry. This is not gonna last forever, because you can't. It's a lot of work. You remember mm-hmm. when you did yours, right, Patrick? I'd love yeah. to hear yeah. your experience. Yeah, of it. yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, priming is the only way to kick out carb uh, addiction the only way there isn't other way i've tried everything because you will never win with your brain without getting enough nutrients in your body you will never win it, it, it's it's physically impossible and psychologically psychologically it's impossible as well because you know for like you said it's crazy for for almost everyone that we tell people eat as much meat as you can for a few weeks. Okay. They're, they think you're crazy, but if you tell them, all right, eat as much vegetables as you can eat, they're like, oh, you're actually a health doctor. <laughs> crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, but it has the opposite effect. It will never work. You will never get rid of your carb addiction because it's an addiction. We should never eat them. We should never have them in our body. We don't need them. We don't even need them for winter. All those theories that we know, uh, we eat less in summer, we eat more in winter. Yes, we eat more in winter, but more meat and fat. We, we don't need carbs to survive winter. We never did. We don't, we don't need them now. And that's what people don't realize, except being completely brainwashed and eating carbs and that our brain will die. Um, but can you explain that? Yeah. Wait, I do want to go on what you just said because yeah. see, that's what people don't understand. Why wouldn't like a whole volume of vegetables do the same thing, right? Yeah. This is why when you look at amino acids, that starts explaining it. Because yeah. yes, there's plants that'll give you certain amino acids, but never all that you need mm-hmm. and never right balance. And you're like, well, what if we did the perfect creation? Well, here's the thing within the amino acid also. There's a balance that needs to be met that is yeah. only met in meat. And in our words, yeah. and in our words, the easiest and simplest thing is those are not food for us. The vegetables are not food. Yeah. Meat is our food. The vegetables can be used as medicine, though. There's a big yeah. difference. One is actually food, one's yeah. just medicine. And one should be in a minute amount. So it's okay to do vegetables in a minute amount that it actually creates a, a, uh, uh, an effect on you. But of yeah. course, you'd have to get it where it, it's the effect you want and not the negative. Mm-hmm. Like for example, if I had a low clove or garlic, I'm going to be feeling it all day long for the next three to five days. Mm-hmm. So obviously that has too much poison that my body doesn't handle. But I can take out the good part about the garlic and do that and feel fine and it yeah. stored. So that's like a garlic good. extract. Yeah, like an extract. Exactly. Yeah. I don't have problems with, with extracts. Yeah. Yeah. Which eliminates all the anti nutrients. Exactly. Which you know, which they almost which they block bioavailability of this extract anyway. Because the plant yeah. doesn't yeah. want it us to have it. It doesn't want us to have it doesn't want us yeah. to so to, to thrive, yeah. We're eating yeah. them and to eat more of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to eat more of it. They don't want us to eat them, them more. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what? Um, okay, three weeks of eating as much as you can. Okay, yeah. let's explain the OMAD. It's one meal a day. Two mad, it's two meals a day. Right. Okay. So the first week we are eating three meals a day. The second week two meals. No. Nope. Uh, so yeah, two weeks of three meals. So the first week is actually three two weeks. weeks okay. With with snack a uh, uh, lot. Like mm-hmm. The second week is no snack allowed. Three meals a day. Okay. The third week is two meals a day for seven days. Once you get that right, then we test out the priming. Wow. The way we test out the priming is we go into a 23-1 water only. So if you follow the criteria of having your coffee as dessert, yeah. you have no problem doing it for one day water only. And yeah. if you do that, you go into a rest period of three two mads, and then you try it again twice, two 23 That's mm-hmm. when you know if you can do those fairly easily, no problems. Yes, you're going to have a little bit of hunger. That's expected. But if you do all that, then you're clear to go into more of the fasting schedule and start ramping yourself up. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, but first week it's snacking. It's still only meat or it meat and, and carnivore products. Eat, yeah, carnivore products. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you eat dairy? Because you mentioned the uh, cheese. Do you eat dairy? And I do. I do. It doesn't, it doesn't agree with me. I do get yeah. acne. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. It's like, how much does it bother me versus, uh, so the sacrifice versus the, yeah. the, the benefit, right? It doesn't yeah. really take away too much from me. So I still carry some acne from it. Yeah. It doesn't bother me that much. It's a nice pleasurable thing that actually makes me want to eat when uh, I look forward to a meal. Cause you know, I actually prefer fasting. And he's eating sometimes. So it's nice yeah. to have me uh, to make him look like a treat sometimes. Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah, it's you tr- you're tricking your brain. Yeah. I'm tricking my brain. It's like, hey, I, I need to make sure, yeah. I, you know, because that's yeah. a very important part of my life too, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. Of course. So why fasting? What fasting does the, uh, after priming, which is feasting, okay, yes. then it comes fasting. Yeah. Why? W- why we should fast? If the meat's so healthy for us, if we can meet eat meat all the time, why why bother with fasting and not eating? Yeah, well, if you do it properly and you're feasting on the meat properly, you will. Mm-hmm. Not, there's no way around it. You'll get down to the point where you're eating one meal a day, pretty. Mm-hmm. Easy. Mm-hmm. If you're feasting properly, now why fast? Because fasting has so many benefits. Remember. The damage that I've done to my body over this many years, yeah, forty some years, yeah, uh, it would be nice to be able to get that autophagy factory going much more often, mm-hmm. and that's why I like to do the f- fasting because I get to ramp up that autophagy and whatever other apoptosis or whatever mm-hmm. else my body can actually give that I can give my body the time to do. And, yeah. and I feel like this was very natural on top of it, because if we look at the evolution of man, we yeah. doubt that we've had the ample food that we have now. So yeah. I think in synergy, they they work in synergy, feasting and fasting. Because mm-hmm. like you mentioned, sometimes we probably even ate, you know, every few days, isn't it? We, we, we woke up, we hunt. It took us a few days probably to, to hunt an animal sometimes. And then we were feasting, eating as much as we can at once because we didn't know when the next week's going to come. Exactly. So feasting and fasting, it is natural. It's it's unnatural to wake up and eat breakfast and to eat dinner and all those meals, which are completely made up by, by, by sugar companies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who even called it? You know what I mean? It's just you eat a meal. That's it. You break the fast. It's one meal. I, I consider, you know, um, I don't consider anything. No lunches, no nothing. You just eat once a day, preferably in the morning. Or I I, I like to eat in the middle of a day because it gives me, like you said, probably atoph- some autophagy when I'm training on empty stomach, some growth hormone, some testosterone, some hormone balance, I hope. Mm, and I just feel good while I'm fasting and, and, and working and thinking and stuff like this. And then, you know, I eat 
and then I recover from eating before I go to sleep. So for me, I think it's it's the best. You eat once a day? Um, I'm eating every other day right now, typically. Wow. And uh, every now and then I'll go to because I've been socially very active. So yeah, I've been I've been forced every now and then to do once a day uh, here and there. So maybe on the weekend, like a once a day kind of thing. But uh, mm -hmm. I love the alternate day fast part. It's just so yeah. Really nice. So I really like to get the autophagy as much as mm -hmm. possible, but mm -hmm. not too much. So I don't want to go too much either. Cause I noticed when I strain myself and I'll do like too many seven twos or too many, uh, uh, too many four days, five days. Um, I start, I start feeling a lot weaker and getting, so it's kind of like a bell shaped curve, right? Trying to find a sweet spot. i with workout, of course. So, mm -hmm. and I don't work out that heavy, but if I did, I probably would go to old man. But mm -hmm. because I don't work out that heavy and I'm just kind of doing it for fun. Alternate day works for me best. Wow, nice. And it's so, uh, it gives you a lot of freedom, I think, not worrying about eating all the time. I remember back in the, in the, in the high carbs day, I was like going out with my girlfriend and, and instead of enjoying myself, I was like every two hours, oh, I have to eat where I'm going to, yeah. where I'm going to get my next meal from, yeah. um, you know, and preparing three or four meals every time I was going out and prepare myself a meal horrible time when I think about it now. Now it I don't care when I don't care about it. When I'm eating, I'm eating. When I'm not, I'm still happy and, and, and you know, full of energy. And it gives me so much freedom. People don't, you know, I, I weigh almost 100 kilograms. Okay. Which is, which is quite a lot. I'm 5'11". Yeah. Um, sometimes 96, sometimes 94, yeah. so around 100. Okay. And I weigh like this for, for the last, I don't know, six, seven years since, since I was including um, more, more, more beef in my diet. I put a lot of muscle since then. Um, and this is like around, around hundred kilograms. People can't believe that I'm eating once a day. No one can believe that. People think I eat like 12 times a day, probably. But you have a lot of muscle. Right? Yeah. It's because hard. I have a lot of, yeah. 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 Of it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And then they see how much, um, how much I lift because I don't do heavy very heavy training all the time. I don't think it's healthy for us. I don't think it's good for us. Um, because when we were hunting, not every hunt was, uh, you know, was, uh, that you almost died, you know, chasing, chasing after animal. So I don't think you, you balance it out. It's like feasting and fasting, you know? Yeah. Um, and the same with sprinting, you know, sometimes you sprint very hard. Sometimes you go, you know, for 30 seconds, sometimes you go for 10 seconds because I think mimics our natural way of living. It's the best way for us. And I, I, I know so, I know so because it, 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 you know, it, it work, it works for my body so well. I never thought I'm going to achieve such a great result. Um, when, when it comes to life, basically in, enjoying life. Talking from a point of, you know, being addicted from a lot of things, you know, heavy drugs, weed, uh, alcohol, not so much, maybe, but cigarettes, not so much, but weed was definitely the one. And, you know, and food is the worst one. Um, yeah. I'm sure you can feel the same thing um, because you were addicted from food before you started your carnivore journey as well, I think, isn't it? Very, very much. I was, uh, I was actually doing uh, uh, like a gallon of Pepsi a day. Wow. Oh yeah, my yeah. God. <gasps> um, I used to like, uh, be big Burger King fan, uh, all of the yes. foods, uh, my yeah. foods when I got home, I was calling oh my eating God. every yeah. couple of hours. I had to carry, you know, uh, snacks and stuff. I used to love the mm -hmm. secret bar, you know, so yeah. just, just to hold me for the next. Yeah. You know. Because you didn't feel well when you didn't have, right. um, this sugar intake. Yeah. Through, through. And I was pure sugar. I mean, I used oh to my only God. wake up. I used to have a sugary cereal with uh, like half the bowl with sugar and the rest a little bit of milk. So American. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So American, you could say that. Absolutely. <laughs> that's how that's how I started today. And uh and uh I did have the orange juice, so I, I did not do that. I only had orange juice when I had yeah. like pancakes or something like that, you know. So, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh it's my crazy. god. It was sugar. I it was sugar later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I, I understand. I, you know, not every day, but 
many days I was the same. I could start a day from sugar, pastries, donuts and stuff like this and finish on ice cream and cookies and then wake up in the middle of the night just to eat a pack of cookies. I know that feeling. I've done that many times in the middle of the night. Robbing it's crazy. It's such a severe depression and yeah. panic attacks. Yeah. Yes. It's ridiculous. I was smoking weed at the time as well. Oh my God. I was just, I was afraid of leaving my house because I was like, someone's going to show. I was, I was afraid going around people. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, it's interesting. I had the same type of fear. I was, um, I actually slept with a gun under my pillow. I mean, no way. Oh yeah. I had, I had the weirdest, weirdest things. Like I had, I had this fear of never locking my front door, checking it a hundred times, locking my car yeah. doors. I think, yeah, I Rob, I, 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 it was paranoia. Be paranoia. Yeah. 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 I was paranoid about everything. Paranoid yeah. about stuff in my food. Then, oh, and even though I was eating the trash food, I still, I still was paranoid about it. Yeah. 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 Um, because you know, high sugar equals. Depression equals panic attacks equals all of this what we just mentioned. That's the main that's the main reason. When people go to talk to a um, psychologist now, he should ask them what do you eat? Every doctor should do it to be fair, not only psychologist. Every doctor should say so. I mean, when you go with your dog to a vet, they're like, Oh, what did you feed your dog? But no one asks a human what did you eat? You know, it's 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 crazy. Maybe you should change what you should feed your dog. It will get better. Maybe you shouldn't give him bread. You know, maybe you shouldn't give him chocolate or ice cream. It's right. bad for a dog, but no one thinks it's bad for us. It's still crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah people still go into pills um, instead of just going into the simplest way. I mean, I do it for some... Yeah, or ser yeah, yeah. Yeah, people come to me for an advice all the time, okay? And, and and I'm happy to give an advice, but the advice is always the same. Check how you sleep, check what you eat, and check your activity levels. That That's the main three things what you should consider thinking about instead of considering, you know, taking some shots or, or going for a, to an operation table or taking pills and... You know, sort this out first, and maybe you're not going to need those other things. Yeah. And that's what happens a lot of time. People don't need the artificial stuff, let's say, when they're going to set their daily habits. And, you know, what I teach people is how to eat meat. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> I teach people, you know, when you say, you can't say to a normal person who's high carb, go carnivore. You just can't do it. I've noticed that. Yeah. But start including more protein in your diet. Then you go a bit, you know, another level. Then you go another layer uh, level. Then after three months of just learning how to eat the meat and cook your food, because majority of people are like, you know, like you said, they don't even know what cooking is anymore. It's yeah. so easy and so addictive that, you know, you just tell people, how to cook. And I'm like, how is it possible you cannot put a chicken, let's say in rice, because when they go from chemicals and high and high uh, high carbs and stuff like this, you know, chicken and rice is, is the health cure for them for sure. You know, right. even rice can have some arson and stuff like this. I understand that. Yeah. But healthy liver, healthy liver can eliminate that. And then, you know, it's just, it's just, just start from this. People don't even know how to do that. It's crazy. People don't know how to cook chicken and rice. <laughs> it is. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. All right. My, uh, yeah. Everybody to, uh, to, you know, going to the fast food or going to any food place. Yeah. Yeah. Or mainly now all their food from the app. Yes. Or, or right. You're right. That's even crazier, right? Yeah. Everything on the phone and then someone delivers and then you don't even know what you're eating anymore. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have no clue. And I can guarantee you right now. No one will put healthy stuff in yeah. delivery, okay? No one cares about this. <laughs> no, one, no one cares. Everyone cares if you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna uh, and you're gonna order it again. That's it, okay? There's so many chemicals like food enhancements, flavor enhancements, and and all the other stuff that mainly you don't eat even food. You eat food-like products. 
Coach um, Raymond, why beef is so healthy for us? Why beef? Yeah. yeah. And why people thrive on beef? Why everyone can say that, you know, ribeye is the best thing since sliced bread, let's say. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I think I think the main thing is ruminant animals, the animals yeah. that have more than uh, one stomach. So they're able to process literally garbage, which is, you know, whether it's grass or whether they're, they're just toss processed foods, it doesn't yeah. matter, they process it through their gut and actually turn it into a very valuable uh, energy source. Yeah. And somehow even then they actually extract all of this in, and put it into their muscles yeah. where all the clean stuff is. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, even if they gain a little bit of fat around there, which this is what we might, a, a, a lot of people will say toxins get stored in fats, but I don't think it works that same way. It almost becomes a homeopathic dose of that toxin. It is, I, it's 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 awesome for us to eat it. So we're getting almost a homeopathic uh, 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 dose Response. of the toxin that actually helps us, I think strengthens us from any yeah. real toxin that's out there. Yeah. So eating the fatty meat like ribeye, like what you just yeah. said, is has been a game changer for me. But I've heard people do it with lamb, uh, yeah, and other ruminants also. But it's also something. Have you noticed? It's not like you choose. It's like all of a sudden you just want that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like because I used to be a chicken guy. I yeah. Like, yeah. Me too. We're getting me too. Yeah. Yep, know, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ground beef, but that's it. I wasn't big about steak. All of a sudden, I was like, I just got to have a steak. I just want yeah. more of that. Now I can't stop. I did ribeye for like eight months. One day. <laughs> so, wow. Talk about just ribeye. Yep, just ribeye. Not even just ribeye. Just ribeye. Wow, you lasted eight months. I can't believe it. It's so yeah. crazy. It was first so hard for me. After that, first month always helped. After yeah, that. it's it's pure hell, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pure hell, and that's why people cannot do it. They give up. Yeah, I had a client a few days ago, and he was high carb for. Uh, he was trying to be carnivore-ish for a few weeks, and then he went away for a few months to Italy and stuff like this. And you know what they eat in Italy? Pure pasta, yeah. alcohol, pizza, and everything doughy. What you can imagine, okay? And he came back with severe depression, with uh, anxiety. You name it. All the things we had before. Of course. Um, and I'm like, okay, now you have to go to the butcher shop, get a lot of healthy meat. Um, he likes venison a lot. All right, get some venison. Perfect. Get, But don't get like one portion. Get like 10 kilograms. Divide it, freeze it, have it always in your house. That's your solution for, uh, you know, not to snack or eat something from warm to home. And... You know, and I said to him, okay, be careful because when you start eating healthy now, your health will go down. It's very possible. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it's very possible your health will go sure. down and you will feel like shit for a few days, maybe even a week, you know? And then like, oh, we'll see. People don't believe it that much because you start eating healthy. You think you're going you're gonna to start feeling healthy straight away. It doesn't work like this. Yeah. It doesn't work like this. So that's why people give up. And then after a few days, he rings me and like, oh, I'm ill. I'm ill. I'm absolutely ill. I have cough. I have flu symptoms, everything. I'm like, what did I tell you? And I'm like, what have you been eating? And he goes, yeah, I've been only eating, you know, freshly killed, you know, from the woods to the table, venison, which is one of the healthiest meat around. You have to add some butter to it or some other, uh, uh, other fat because it's very lean. But that's what he eating. And he got sick after that. Normally what people would do, or I give up, I, I'm eating like, like I did. And that's a mistake. Survive this, this, this period of feeling like crap, and then miracle happens. What happened? He was like this for three days, and then back to the gym, smashing the best workout in months. Nice. Killing all the records. And, you know, when you see a person like this, and he's like 56, 56, almost on retirement. Yeah. It's crazy. Like 90 kilos on a pull down, uh, 90 kilos on the bench press. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But if I didn't tell him about this period, he would go back to smoking, probably go back to drinking. All right, this is not for me. This is killing me. And that's what people do. And that's what, you know, we survived. And that's why we're thriving right now. When you started, I bet you felt the same. We were talking about, um, you know, keto flu and stuff like this. 
you know, the, our body has to detoxify from all those oxalates and, and ultimately crystals and, 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 and everything else. And you know, which which are in our body and can be there for many years after. Yes. And that's why I believe this is nothing what we feel right now. I think the best is is coming, uh, Coach Raymond. I think the best is coming. <laughs> our best years of thriving, uh, you know, our life. It's 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 coming to us. I I believe so. I'm still, you know, I still haven't done like a dry fast or like you know seven day fast and stuff like this. Um, have you ever got to, um, fasting, uh, you know, more, more than three, four days? Yeah. I've done the dry fasting for uh, 72 hours. Um, wow. Uh, no, I mean, I, I can say I've never felt better in my life, you know, uh, probably yeah. usually a year and a half in carnivore. So every, every time since then the health leveling up has been noticeable. Like I know that I'm getting better and better and even now mm -hmm. it's almost surprising because i can't put it into words yeah i don't understand what's shifting at this point so it's not any longer anything like my my different colitis flare up or anything like that those are those are so minimal i don't even notice it it's mm -hmm. my, my brain function is also just been way out there i can't believe the stuff i can remember now and remembering yeah. the sentence I had talked because I used to have that problem. I used to be like yeah. avoiding the room, oh, where am I? You know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So, you know, for that to be so sharp and kind of remember like, you know, uh, so clearly on everything, yeah, uh, it, it's amazing. So it's, that's the part that's happening right now. Um, uh, my bone structure, I've been stronger than ever. Uh, you know, I started taking rock climbing just because my son is. Uh, so it's just, it's just weird little steps, but um, sorry, your 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 question on the uh, what, what was your question again? Have you done uh, dry fast? I asked about dry fast. Yeah, and then another question was uh, you know longer than three four days fasting. So let, let's concentrate on the dry fast now, because yeah, I haven't done it. I'm not scared of it, but you know. <laughs> It's just weird not drinking water for me. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it's actually not really. There's a lot more habitual. Uh, uh, there's a lot. Uh, what I've noticed is as as more a carnivore I've done, I've been drinking because it's habitual thinking that, oh, I'm under drinking. Yeah. I'm, you know, but it's because of how I've been programmed. So I've been yeah. forcing my drinking, but I'm not thirsty. I've noticed as more a carnivore that I get, the less thirsty I am. So the, the longest I've done dry fasting was 72 hours just to try. Wow. And how did you feel? It was amazing. Uh, wow. It was it was actually a lot easier because you really literally do not feel hungry when you're dry fasting. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, I don't know. It just felt great. Now, I did overextend it where I started doing alternate day dry fasting, and I did that for mm -hmm. about three months, and that was too much. That was... Uh, that was a lot. So one day I would like not drink, not eat. One day I would, mm -hmm. one day I would not eat, drink. And yeah. it was just too much on my body. It was yeah. just uh, too often, too much. Yeah. So, but I had to find out. I had to find out the yeah. extent. Um, and uh, so what I can say about dry fasting is there's definitely a benefit if you really follow your body on it. If you're not thirsty, don't drink. You're thirsty. Mm -hmm. It's fine having a little bit, you know, and, and, and as you fast, you'll notice you drink less. Your body just adapts for some reason. Yeah. For me, the next level of adaptation, fat adaptation, is actually getting water out of those cells, out of the yeah. fat cells. And that's the advantage of dry fasting from what I've heard in the literature and also I've done mm -hmm. myself. Um, what it does is it takes... Um, your cells, your dead cells, your cancer cells, or everything was what you don't need, and your body changes into water. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, explain it in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a very simple way. Yeah, but I think that's what it actually does. It takes all the bad cells, all the died cells, and it changes into water. And I heard a podcast with um, Doctor uh, Jay Vanquish. Uh, he's, the, yeah. he's the inventor of X3 bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was talking about a study when they took some people, I don't remember how long it was, um, so I'm not going to make it up, but there was a group of people who were drinking and group of people who weren't drinking. I don't remember how long, how many people. There was two groups, okay? And they measure their 
uh, amount of liquid coming out, right? It was the same. Same thing. Yeah. It was the same. If you were drinking or not, your body was getting rid of the same amount of water. Yeah. There was no change in in amount of um of, of releasing water at all. It was crazy. They did it for a few days. Do you remember um, how long? It was five days, maybe um, three, five days. But it was crazy. The same amount of liquid coming out. So it's around, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So and it was uh, it was like 20, 20 hours or so of not drinking. What was it? Ah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, like Ramadan, sun up to sunset. Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. I know what Ramadan is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the funny part is, everyone says we need so much water, but, you know, Egyptians do it for so long and they work in a, like 45 degrees heat. They're still alive, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's right. We know we can go without yeah. water for long periods of time. Now, now a healthy body can. Yeah, so exactly. That's the problem. So I would yeah. never tell anybody, hey, you're eating carbs, you have obesity. No. That. Please drink a lot of water. You need Yeah, that. yeah. The yeah. body doesn't need that much water if you don't have any carbs in it, you know? Yeah. Hardly needs it. Funny you say that because the body doesn't need need a lot of anything when you go carnivore, when you eat the way yeah. you should. I even noticed the same thing with salt. When I was going from high carb um, this winter, normally toward a meeting, I was eating more carbs through winter. Um, and then I was going, uh, you know, going out of it. And I was drinking so much salt. I had a, you know, a, a, a two pints, no, four pints bottle, like uh, pink, because I put so much salt. Because I was like, oh my God, I love salt so much. But it was decreasing, it was going down, the amount of salt I was drinking and seasoning my steaks. Uh, you know, the more I was on carnivore, the more I was eating the way I should, my body said, all right, I don't need so much water, I don't need so much salt. Yes. Ridiculous yeah. how it works. Yeah. Suddenly everything is like your body tells it's like your body should tell you what to do. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You don't need as much food. You don't need all the, yeah. You know, wouldn't that be amazing if they actually had this strategy instead and everybody would just need to eat less and talk about how good that is for the planet, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> instead of them doing this meatless stuff and all that's gonna do yeah. make you hungrier and want to eat more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is the way to do it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this? Um, I, I know what you think about Beyond Meat. This is crazy. But now, you know, there's a new generation of people who are going to eat Beyond Meat and who are going to eat um, lab-created meat. Um, what do you think about it? I know it's tragic. Uh, I've, I've, I've watched the whole documentary, how they do it and stuff, how many animals they kill and how actually worse it is for the planet while they do it because they use so much energy. It's just ridiculous. But what do you think about it? There's so what's, going to happen? Happen? what's going to happen to all those TikTok brainwashed kids? Think about, to me, the biggest thing is how prisoner we would be to these, to these corporations, industry. Yeah. yeah. Because then all of a sudden you're also committing to their factories. What happens when they have like, a, you know a burnout or something and they get yeah. electricity and all of a sudden you don't have meat and you don't know how to get meat the old fashioned way. Yeah. Kind of sucks, right? Yeah. I mean, you're literally putting your hands on, on, on their sh shoulders there. Yeah. Um, and as we know, I mean, you know, even though if you try to lean on vegetable foods from there, you're yeah. starving yourself slowly and slowly. Where are you going to get the proper that, that The other thing is how do they know they're getting it right? Are they getting the proper amino acid balance? Are they properly getting the... Yes, there is flesh in there, but there's probably so many things missing because they're getting a yeah. mud culture and then they're making that grow. And then they're also using a bunch of antibiotics to make sure that they don't... Yeah, so they do. Things ...that they don't write. So, I mean, overall, this this is... It's so bad for us. bad experiment. This is a bad yeah. experiment. Yeah. Guess what cells they use to produce that meat? Uh, they extracted from they extracted they extracted from animals, yeah. But yeah. what cells? Is it the stem cells? Cancer cells. Cancer cells, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they there's no limit right. for them to uh, to spread. It's the only cell which right. spreads so fast. Right. Of course. So they take cancer cells from animals. Yeah. Okay. 
they added to the meat the, to the meat they added to the, those 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 i don't remember what's it called what the um f- feces it's 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 cow's feces no feces it's uh no no, no not feces I've, i lost the word i'm sorry i lost the word they extract salt in yeah. and that yeah. it us yeah 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 feces yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm sorry yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they extract it from uh, animal when it gets born. Yeah, when it's born. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then they add cancer cells to it, all the other stuff. And then, yes, they have to add antibiotics because uh, because of, um, you know, salmonella and, and all the other stuff. So it, it's crazy what they do with it. They actually use cancer cells. Yeah. yeah that is crazy. I didn't know about the cancer cells. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. I don't care. Sorry? I don't- I would not touch that stuff. I don't care how good it tastes or how cheap it is. That will not happen. What they want to do now is they fighting. Well, this there's a law already already signed by president that they can they can sell it to the public. Um, but now they're they're fighting for another law that they don't have to label it as lamb grown meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 When this happens, okay they want to meat producers not labeling their meat that it's a natural grown meat so so we don't know which is which so they can actually contaminate actual foods too so they can literally yeah. they could literally actually say ground beef and you can mix some lab yeah. grown with meat it's yeah. terrible terrible yeah 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 all they want to do is is you know yeah, so so we don't, we we won't have a choice basically because I don't think it's gonna happen because um, a lot of people are fighting against it. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, with all this TikTok and everything, how people you know save the planet, they think they save the planet by not eating meat. It's ridiculous. I don't know how how bad is it in states. It's, um, I, is it? Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's 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 in Poland. We're just getting there. Um, we like we like few years uh, with um, with veganism and all this other you know um, all this other bullshit. You know, ten years like after you basically. But um, it's so bad. People still people people believe they saving the planet, but not eating meat. It's just crazy, absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah, not realizing that they're killing more animals by eating plants. I was talking with Dr. Anthony Chafee a few weeks ago, and we realized that we can survive on one cow, one cow a year. One cow a year. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you eat around one kilogram, uh, even less when you include fasting, I was just counting that, you know, the cow is around, you can get around 350 kilograms. 000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just crazy. One cow a year. Imagine that. Yeah. And let's say if it's two cows. So what? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. You know, a year that can feed you the whole year. Yeah. That's fantastic. Talk about yeah. a great environmental footprint. Yeah. One, yeah. one or two cows. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Coach, why do you think you start feeling better after eliminating plants? For my case, yeah. mainly was the, the, I noticed the bloatedness went away very quickly. So yeah. for me, it's more of the, not just the inflammation, but the yeah. gasness that made the expense that, mm-hmm. of course, there was the inflammation also. So on the gut, um, it's it's also the fact that obviously not everybody's microbiome is the same. Mine was yeah. really, really bad off. So it just wasn't good at breaking down these plant foods and it ended up being more bulk and gas all the time Mm -hmm. and uh, all that did is kept on irritating my colon over and over and over again and of course i have leaky gut so that's probably part of it too uh Mm -hmm. so yeah that's what i think i mean it's not just a plant poison it's just a plant's effect on my gut yeah because it's weird because a lot of people think almost everyone thinks that when you have colon problems you should eat more plants that's right. Right? Some kind of fiber. Exactly, to, fiber, yeah. I used to do metamucil fiber on top of that, too. Don't yeah. remember what I had large, large stools. 
Yeah. And boy, it was like, it was like having cars every time I went to the bathroom. <laughs> it took me, I used to three times a day, three times a day. And it took me half an hour to an hour. I used to have all my devices. I used to read all kinds of articles in the bathroom. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. No, now I was just lying. Yeah. Uh, now I go every maybe three days. And a few days. Yeah. It's very quick. It's very quick. So I don't spend any time in there. So now all of a sudden I'm not reading the magazines I used to. And I'm like, yeah. that kind of is a little upsetting, you know, I'm playing the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, my <laughs> oh, my legs numb. That no me time, time anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No me time. Done no me time. <laughs> so that, that part was a little bummer, but it's okay. You know? Yeah. 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 I bet you even forget to buy toilet paper sometimes, don't it? I know. You almost don't need it. I know. <laughs> Everything's so clean. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. Clean. Yeah, yeah. Coach, can we talk about steak and butter gang? Yes, yes. So I'm part of What is it? Uh, It's a community of... uh, Uh We encourage for folks who are entering a carnivore to have a community anyways. So I'm coaching there with my 90-day program, making sure people get primed properly. And probably, Uh you know, if they want to know, hey, how am I going to feel this week as I'm doing this? We can give you a heads up. Hey, this is probably how you're going to feel. Mm-hmm. You know, just like Patrick was talking about how, yay, there, there's such thing as keto flu. Some people panic, like like Patrick was saying, and they just quit right there. Well, the reason is, is you can hear it from others and many others experience and say, hey, oh, this is normal. Okay, I don't need to worry about it. Let me just wait another week. And once you do and you realize, oh, yeah, this was just part of the adaptation. So that's what the community is there for. It's like, you're not just hearing it from me or just say Patrick, you're hearing it from other members also. And that really strengthens your, your, your saying that you, oh, I'm not abnormal. I'm not weird yeah. you know, or, or I have, I have this special circumstance where, you know, maybe I have no gallbladder. Well, we have to, a lot of folks there with no gallbladder. Yeah, that's really what the Steak and Butter Gang is. I follow Bella, you know, Bella's leading this channel. She's back. So yeah. uh, come on and join us. Get to talk to me uh, personally. And uh, we we all have a good time on our calls. Yeah. Um, you mentioned gallbladder. People are, uh, you know, scared to eat meat and eat fat because of the gallbladder. Yes, yes, yes. The good thing is that the body will bypass that and allow, I think it's through your liver somehow and it yeah. create a way to, uh, um, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Liver enzymes. Yeah. 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 So, which is not a problem at all. I would not, I would not stress that yeah. out. The only thing is that I've noticed people with gallbladder and uh, a removal, uh, is probably they cannot eat until stuff. Uh, just like the yeah. other then. So with them, I tell them, hey, eat every couple hours and eat until full every couple hours until your meals start getting smaller later on. Mm-hmm. Do you recommend some um, ox bile to those people, some uh, some supplements or anything like that? While- I Yeah, I don't like putting supplements in right away because I feel mm-hmm. like there's, there there is a need to let your body recognize what you're doing. So, but if it gets bad enough, definitely ox bile is great. Yeah. Uh, you can do LMNT, you know, at first, but in other words, what I'm trying to say is wait till the problem arises and then start tackling it with supplements from there. Yeah. Uh, something to make it easier for your body to transition. But if it can do it on its own, to me, that's actually even better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the, um, what's the worst case you had? Of the past on joining um, steak and butter gang that you had to coach like the, the, the you know they really had severe problems after eliminating plants maybe some oxalate t- toxicity or something like that yeah very much so uh, we, we've had this lady who uh oh my gosh poor thing she went straight from vegan to uh carnivore oh my and god she just kept on bloating and bloating every time she ate uh any any meat foods yeah. And uh, even me telling her, of course, she did her own research too. So she followed her own protocol, whatever. Mm-hmm. Even me telling her eating small throughout the day, that wasn't the one yeah. thing. The only thing that was working is when she didn't eat. And of course, you kind of have to eat. Especially, so it was kind of like a, that was when we we started adding supplements with her too. Um, I don't know what ended up happening to her, but uh, uh, she lasted for about four months or so. And then I have we haven't heard from her from there. Yeah. Um, I've uh, on your Instagram, your last post is a letter from Susie. 
Yes, and that's exciting. Yes. Oh my God, I had literally almost tears in my eyes because I have, you know, I have people that didn't send me meat or cards yet, um, but I have people like that as well that I changed their lives. And um, what what is going through your mind when you read something like this? I mean, I I feel I feel very very honored that that I get to be a part of uh, their journey. I mean, you know, yeah. somebody who's uh, for those who don't know who Susie Cernal is, yeah, 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 she, she is uh, she is out of uh, the so there's five manufacturing uh, manufacturing packs out there that uh, pack meats, uh, mm-hmm. and she's the smallest, but the also the longest. She's been around longer than any of the packing companies out there. Wow, meat packing companies, meat packing. Yeah, company. so she's a big deal. She's the CEO mm-hmm. of the company. She reached wow. out to, all to actually help her uh, lose a weight. And what's interesting about her story is she says she's tried more diets than Oprah has. She'd lose for a little while, gain it all. I'm the same. Yeah. So I'm the same, yeah. She says the only thing that's worked for her is us so far. Yeah. And she's had a sustained weight loss because that's all she was there for is weight loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's had a sustained weight loss to this day for a year and a half. And this is by far the longest she's had so quite a story on her so yeah it's great crazy to yeah. so and she said to have people like that yeah i have goosebumps and i have tears in my eyes sometimes when it happens yeah because um you know i know how bad i felt and i know that people can feel even worse and i yeah. can do something about it they can do something about it most of people don't realize that that they can do something about it and you know that's why i appreciate your work so much because it definitely got me into carnivore, got me into priming. Um, it helped me with my carb addiction. Yeah. Um, so, you know, every time, that's the happen often, thank God now. But every time, like through this winter, I had, you know, more carbs. And it's hard to quit carbs. When you start, it's yeah. really, really hard. It's, it's almost impossible. But I know the tool. I have the tool. Thanks to you, I have the tool. Priming is the tool. Wake yeah. up, eat some meat. You know, don't allow to get hungry, eat more meat. And then before you go to bed, eat more meat and then repeat for as long as you have those cravings. Yeah. And then you start Uh, hating. You just start hating. You just don't want meat. You don't want carbs. You don't want anything. You're like, I just don't want to eat. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Priming, Priming worked so well. I literally just finished that, you know, just eating once a day now, it's, it's piss a piss. And not only that. First time in three or four weeks, I had eggs today because I, I didn't touch eggs. I was like, I don't need eggs. But today yeah. I was like, oh, I'm I'm not, I'll have a break from meat, but I still had um, beef sausage in it. But, you know, and I had only, you know, consider, comparing to what I, what I normally eat when what I was eating while well, this priming period, you know, I had six eggs and two small sausages. That's it. That's, and I had a very hard workout today morning not hungry at all just drinking water some yerba mate and i feel amazing so much energy it's 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 ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and you know you were talking about your transformation not only physical but mental as well and you know i can i can i can say the same thing because i went from a from a person who was not able to read at all not able to read not able to think I was scared. I was going to say little boy, but I was very fat. <laughs> um, and, you know, in a few years, I went to the person which coaches, um, you know, everyone now. Doctors coming to me, dietitians, trainers, lawyers, um, psychologists, um, businessmen, you name it, you know, and me coming from this person who was laying on a sofa all day long, you know, not able to do anything uh, with his life to a person which coaches, you know, so many people now. And it's mainly through diet, mainly through diet, change your thinking as well. But then your thinking will change anyway when you change your food. Diet changes your mind. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like you said, you know, you are able to read, you are able to remember without even realizing that and without even forcing your, um, your, yourself to do it. You just do it. You just remember this stuff and, you know, you just don't think about 
now when we have this interview, you know, I didn't even send you questions because I'm like, he doesn't need them. <laughs> right, right. He's going to fly through my questions because I know you. I've seen your interviews so many times, you know, and that's why I think you're one of uh, pioneers of um, of coaching. And, you know, I learned from you, you know, so much stuff and I helped so many people thank, thanks to you because, you know, under eating is such a severe problem of people these these days going carnivore, going keto. I have so many people going on keto and feeling, you know, not themselves because they didn't eat enough. They didn't have, they have iron deficiency. They have amino acid def- deficiency, you know, too much um, vegetable oils, too much vegetables, too much plants, you know, because keto, you know, doesn't always tell you eliminate, you know, eliminate all the vegetable oils. Um, so how your eating looks uh, right now? Your, your 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 daily routine. You said you eat once every two days, but what do you eat? Uh, and as well, I'm still ribeye. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll I might have a little bit of eggs, or I might have a little bit of bacon, or uh, all of those. Everything else is side plate. So I had chicken wings the other day, but no, it's still the main ribeye. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right, coach. One more question for you. Three main health habits you could tell people to change or to introduce right now so they can change their life and they can, you know, start thinking about feeling better and feeling healthier. Yeah, that definitely the priming. Uh, if you haven't, okay. so it, just, just give it a week. If, if you think that you can't do it, just a week of uh, meat only and that alone, it will give you the revelation like that you need that, wait a minute, there might be something there. So if you could just go for a week on that, I mm-hmm. definitely advise that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The second thing is is probably, you, you know, as far as something to change your life. I know this is going to sound strange, but mm-hmm. it's the possibility of having a different conversation with yourself. Wow. The observation piece is so important through this carnivore diet with no judgment to learn yourself who you are. Try to pretend that you really don't know who you are when you go on this journey. Try to pretend, I don't know what feeling full is, what eating is really about. Try to say that to yourself and say, hey, I'm going to observe myself, how I eat, what patterns I eat on, and what result it is without judgment. And I think that will get you very close to actually really embracing mm-hmm. this new journey. The other last third thing, but very mm-hmm. important also, is the miracle of taking a picture of yourself before you start this journey. You take your picture of yourself, front, side, back, and face. You do this every two weeks. It doesn't matter. It, this is for nobody else. This is just for you. The thing is, it does two things. You have to face yourself in the mirror. And guess what? When you face yourself in the mirror, all of a sudden, you're accountable for somebody. Yes, that person right in front of you. That alone is pretty huge. So you're taking that picture and you're learning to accept who you're seeing in front of you, whether you're in fat person or frail person or just unhealthy person, does not matter. You're accepting that person and you're accepting that person as it goes through that journey later on. And if successful, you'll learn to love both person, the person who started the journey all the way down to the person who ended the journey. And that's a powerful feeling all put together. That's a powerful speech, coach. I have goosebumps now. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. You you have such a, a, a such a great advice. Um, have you got anything else to add to to, to our listeners? Is there uh, anything else you want to say? If you guys are looking for me, uh, look look my name up on Google. You'll be able to get me on Facebook. I have a Facebook. Uh, Raymond Nazon. Uh, Raymond Nazon over in Instagram. Uh, it's pretty easy to find me. So um, I'm sure Patrick has found me just by typing my name. I'm pretty much all over there. So it's hard to not to find you when you when you Google carnivore and when you're in the carnivore community. Very hard. 
You are, you know, I think you are still underappreciated. Well, thank you. Telling, I really appreciate that. Yeah. You know, because the 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 the, the creation about you know the the uh, you know inventing priming. I know you didn't invent it really, but you made it mainstream. Okay, right. none of us cre- uh, you know invented or created the carnivore. That's right. That's you right. know, you know, we are trying to take it mainstream, but you know, um, I th- I I think yeah, I think you you need more appreciation for it. You know, and 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 uh, you know, I invite everyone to join Steak at Butter Gang. I join everyone to 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 contact Coach Raymond and you know get some coaching from him because it's really really worth it. Um, and yeah, and start getting your um, your life back together, Coach. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to spread the you know to spread the carnivore word, to spread the health word. And um, yeah, I hope to, uh, to to see you soon. I wish you you know. Uh, all the best and you know uh, much you know still much better days because you know i believe they are coming and i really hope we're gonna meet you know in person one day that'd be great i really do you know we live so far away thank you to um you know to to, to internet and technology that uh, that we can talk and that we can meet you know and spread the word together but really one day i would like to meet you and you know and say thank you in person for <laughs> what you do I'd love that. You know, I, my my wife has gone to Poland before. I would love to go back yeah. there with her. So yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only the only thing I think our beef is a lot more expensive. <laughs> I would love to try different countries. Beef. Yeah, you know, to me, it's just like I want to know the taste. How different is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Saying that, I've tried a beef from Uruguay. I've tried the beef lately from Brazil and from Argentina. Mm, and have different. you tried beef from there? No. Okay. There's one more thing, and I will let you go. When I was eating the steak from Argentina, okay, it it's like I felt what the animal was eating. <laughs> yeah. Really. Yes. The ribeye, I I don't you know I take like 400 grams of ribeye, 600 grams. I don't like anything less than that because it's it's just too thin for me. I don't I, I you know I like to slice my own ribeye steak. And when I was when I was getting into it, okay, it almost like it didn't need you know chewing. It was so buttery, so grassy, so full of goodness. Mm-hmm. I never felt anything like it. And I was eating wow. beef from Ireland, um, all over Europe basically, Poland as well. And you know, Europe, England, and Ireland they specialize specialize in uh, in uh, in beef. But when I tried this, it's it's ridiculous. I don't know if it was only that piece, and you know, but I had more of it. I had like nine kilograms of, of ribeye, and it was all the same. And yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I felt the grass, I felt the butter, I felt the nutrients, and it was so I was priming then, and was so looking forward to eat this steak again and again and again and again. It's a shame that it's just so expensive. Um, I'm gonna and, have to and, and you don't want, but yeah, but if you can order, apparently, I don't know if you knew that because I've spoken with the best who travels around the world, and you know, and brings uh, beef from around the world from around the world to Poland, and she says the best beef it's in Argentina and Uruguay. Apparently, that's what she said. Wow. I don't know. I tried it after interviewing her, and it's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, how good it was. It's like it's like it. It was more delicate than a filet steak. Oh, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So if you can order some from Argentina or Uruguay, you know, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I can't even imagine how um, Wagyu beef is going gonna, is gonna to taste at <laughs> this point. <laughs> right, right. You know, I, I, I never tried it. Uh, have you tried? Uh, no, 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 not yet. Well, I, I have had a Wagyu. Uh, yeah. but not actually from Jap- Japanese. It was like, ah, yeah, because you know, it's cheaper. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of yeah. course, of course. Very right. fan. Yeah. Coach, thank you very much for your time again. I wish you all the best. And, you know, I hope I'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.